So the first thing you might want to ask is, why do I want to use projections? And here are some reasons why. One of the biggest whys when it comes to projections is just, it's cool. I mean, you can do things that you've not done before. You can do rain, you can do snow, you can do special effects. Things that have been really hard to build or really hard to make or they've been not necessarily cost effective. Uh, those kind of things are perfect in projection because you can do a lot of them, you can repeat them, and because they're digital, there's really no limit to how much you can use them throughout the show. You know, it can take a long time to build sets. And sometimes you want your students to have that experience of being able to build the sets, and that's a great educational experience, but sometimes you just need the thing built. And so spending 30 hours painting something might not make sense if, for example, it's only gonna be on stage for a couple minutes. And so projections can be a nice solution. Um, they obviously can be created a lot quicker on a smaller scale. And so in that sense, you can have more of them. There's smooth transitions between them too. I mean, that's another reason why is that you can have different scenes and by putting them into a slideshow with a simple cross dissolve transition between there, you actually have a smooth transition from scene to scene. And you can build in your blackouts and you can have, uh, you can go from one location, that location can then become a night location, which then can have some weather element like lightning or moving clouds, and then you can take them back to another location. I mean, one good example would be a show like Annie, where she might be in the orphanage, and then it's the orphanage at night, and then Annie breaks out of the orphanage and now she's on the street and you want to create this moody, sort of scary, she's in the city look and so you might bring in uh, a projection for that and then all of a sudden you're transitioning into the meat of the story where she's at Daddy Warbucks mansion and then by the end it becomes the Christmas mansion and there's just so much ground to cover that it makes a lot of sense to be able to have one button to push and to be able to take the audience from place to place to place. So that would be another reason. So one of the biggest reasons why projections have become more popular is because they're affordable. And they allow you to do some things that you've never been able to do with a lot less money. And that's attractive because fabric backdrops have cost money. It can cost $500 a week or more sometimes just to rent one, let alone if you're using projections, sometimes you can get multiple projections um, for the cost of what it costs you before to use traditional backdrops. And so the fact that they're affordable is exciting because it just makes things more possible for directors uh, of all kinds. Another reason is digital projections are the future. People can see it, they feel it. You see more and more Broadway shows that are using projections, not just as one small video element, but they're using them more and more to tell the entire story. Uh, you see shows like Mean Girls, you see shows like Frozen, uh, shows like Anastasia, where when you look at them, they're being incorporated into the show in a way that doesn't feel disconnected from the story. It feels like that was part of the original concept was to use projections. And in a lot of cases, they can add beauty or they can add depth. And like I said before, they're they're possible. And so you don't necessarily have to be Broadway to produce something that's beautiful that can make your stage feel like Broadway. I've worked on a number of shows where even if it was a small community production, there might be parents or people afterwards who come up to the director and say, I've been to some Broadway shows that didn't look that good. And that is a big moment to feel like that's something that you created on a small budget, on a small stage, uh, really had that kind of an impact on the audience. And that's not to mention that not only does it have an impact on the audience, but it can have an impact on your actors, uh, on your students, on your kids. Uh, I've, I've heard a lot of stories. I was working with a director on uh, a version of The Little Mermaid, and he said that when he 
first put the projection, the first projection of the underwater palace up onto the screen, he walked his actors in and he said the kids just started crying because they felt like, gosh, if somebody took the time to make something this beautiful, this professional, that it just, it just lifted something in them. They felt inspired, they felt part of something bigger, and he said it really affected their performance. He said it brought them together, it made them feel like more of a team, and that's kind of an indirect result of using projections that you wouldn't necessarily imagine. So when you're able to raise the game like that, it can impact a lot of different people, not just necessarily the audience. Not to mention as a director, and every director I've ever talked to has this laundry list of things that have to get done to make the show happen. And you do not want one more thing added to that list. In fact, sometimes being able to use digital projections helps to take some of those scenic design elements off of the list and allow you to do some, do some things in a, in a way that's a little bit easier.